Graham Elwood. Yes. Tell me. What brought you to Moscow? Well, you did. <laughs> oh, really? Did I? <laughs> how, how did I do that? Well, you started... Uh, I first interviewed you a little over a year ago. Because Elizabeth Lee Voss, I interviewed her. And she referred me to you. And when I interviewed you, I didn't even know anything about you. Which was hilarious. As we were talking on... And then you were spellbound. I was spellbound. <laughs> No, I was ignorant. I thought you were like in New Zealand and you literally, we were talking I think on Zoom or Skype or something and you literally were like, do you not know who I am? And I was like, ah, I just thought you were a journalist. I'm Angelina Jolie. An indie, an indie journalist and you were like, uh, no. I mean, you told me your whole whistleblower story and I was like, oh my God. So then I think we maybe did one or two other interviews for my show. And then we just sort of would talk periodically about stuff. And you invited me to start doing Unity for Jay, which was like monthly. <laughs> and then... Um, and you're amazing on that with Vivian Kubrick. You were yes. great. I remember. Yeah, and I, was, and I did that a lot. I really, I really liked getting involved with that. And then it was like in the spring, May or something like that, we were like... And you were like, you should come out. I was like, maybe I, maybe I will. And I... And I um, was try Ron Placone and I. Ron was gonna come with me, but then he's like planning a wedding, and it got too busy for him. And I just thought, I'm gonna come. I'm just gonna do this, and I thought I'm gonna just put it on Indiegogo, and if I can raise a little bit of money, then I'll do it. If I don't raise them, it was just like that simple. If I can't raise the money, I don't come. If I can, I will. And then so let me get this straight. Your best friend piked on you, but you still came to Moscow anyway, even after a lifetime of being told that it was run by the mafia. Yes. Drunk mafia. Drunk KGB, whatever. Yeah. You got balls. <laughs> like a. Just got balls. <laughs> well, as I've said, you know, I've been, I've been shot at in war zones. So Russia can't be worse than when I was like came under fire in Afghanistan or had a rocket attack in Iraq. So. And on top of that, you just survived a week in my apartment. <laughs> That was like a fire base in the, uh, <laughs> in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> no, you've been a very gracious host. It's been a, it's been an amazing experience, and I was you know I just came back from three days in St. Petersburg, which was also fantastic. So I I I, I all my I, I love I love Russia. The people are nice. All the stuff. Well, you 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 helped talk me. You know, you said Graham, all my my preconceived notions as a Westerner about Russia were totally wrong when I got here, and I was like, I got to see this for myself, and. I've was I right? You were absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And then you introduced me to Ksenia, who you know gave me a, a tour of the city, and I've learned so much about Russian culture and the Russian people, and, and doing two shows in front of mostly Russians. That was the first comedy show I've ever been to in my life. My first stand-up comedy show, and I laughed until I cried. Was me learning how to say cocksucker in Russian. That was your first ever comedy show. <laughs> you know, I've been asking Ksenia to teach me how to say cocksucker for the last three years, but she won't do it. So unreasonable. I know. That's that's messed up. Well, part of it too, when when you were like telling me your story and that you're here in exile and your children and what you were going through, part of me was like, well, I got to go there and like bring you a show or something. I don't know. That's just my <laughs> entertainer. Like one of the reasons I went to the war zone. You sure you weren't just coming to bring me Jack Daniels chocolate? <laughs> yes. Yes. And underwear or whatever Vivian gave me to get you. <laughs> That's so, another story in and of itself, isn't it? God, that, that sounds so dodgy. That sounds weird. That sounds so dodgy. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's one of the reasons I went into the war zones was there, I knew that these young military people who, had, who needed entertainment and they were going in a really tough situation. And while you're not in a war zone, you are in a difficult situation. I'm in a war. You are. You're in a war with the it's intelligence. It's an information war. Yeah. And... What they're doing to you is not right, and I got so much mad respect for you and the sacrifice that you made and the cause that you stand for. I was like, well, the least I can do is come over here and tell some dick jokes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, better than being a dick, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that's you, you're, you're like one of the main reasons I came here. And then the first couple days I was here... It was so funny, people on the internet going, hey, have you run into Susie Dawson? I was like, yeah, a couple of times. Knocking on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> Susie, they're after you again. <laughs> so yeah, it's really, I can't, I can't, you know, thank you again for for um, talking me into this and, and encouraging me and, and helping make it happen, so. Well, thank you for having the guts to come. 
Yeah. And I'm very happy that you have had such a fantastic time. And I'm happy you got to do all the interviews you wanted to do and get to make the documentary that you wanted to make. And most importantly, I'm happy that I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pain in the ass. There you go. There you go. I don't want, I want to see, see, I don't want this shot. This one, there. <laughs>